morning. Welcome to the sixth Sunday after Pentecost service. And it is first time, today is the first time reopening our church for worship service. And it is great to see you. So even though you are at home, yeah, we are still on the uh, service on Facebook at 11 a.m. Okay, we are going to share our announcement. And Bible study is still going on Tuesday, 10 a.m. And this time we are uh, reading and studying the book of Acts. So if you are interested in, please come. And a prayer ministry meeting will be this coming Tuesday, 4.30 uh, p.m. And right after that, we are going to have at the council meeting, Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. And every Wednesday, I share my devotion with you uh, on Facebook Live. So please uh, log in to your Facebook and then watch my devotion. It will be uh, at 2.30 p.m. And God's Army, our youth group, will meet by Zoom next Sunday, July, July 19th at 3 p.m. So if you have any uh, children over uh, sixth grade, please let them uh, join our God's Army group. And any announcement? No? And every week, and every week, we pray for three families. It's a general prayer for three families. So it's going on. If you want to uh, pray for those three families, it will be in weekly bell tower. Okay, shall we start the service, the our worship service to God? Amen? Amen. Amen. So please join me in the call to worship. Welcome to this house of the Lord. This is a time to offer our praise to God. With joy, we thank God for all the blessings that have been Come, let us worship God who showers us with mercy. Give praise to God who offers us rest and peace. Amen. And our hymnal, a hymn is for the healing of the nations. So it's all will be on the screen, so you don't have to touch your hymnals or Bible.
Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you know us so well. We thank you for your presence in our lives, even when we don't recognize it. This day we have gathered, coming from a week of unexpected happenings and events, which have surprised us. Make us ready to become stronger witnesses for your love as we receive your word and find our spirit and lives healed. Amen. From the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verses 19 through 34. This is the account of the family line of Abraham's son, Isaac. Abraham became the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel the Aramean from Padan Aram, and sister of Laban the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. The Lord answered his prayer, and his wife Rebekah became pregnant. The babies jostled each other within her, and she said, Why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the Greetings, everyone. My name is Kid Kuhn, and I'm here today to present you today's scripture, coming from the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verses 19 through 34. This is the account of the family line of Abraham's son, Isaac. Abraham became the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel the Aramean from Padan Aram, and sister of Laban the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was childless. The Lord answered his prayer, and his wife Rebekah became pregnant. The babies jostled each other within her, and she said, Why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were two boys in her womb. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment, so they named him Esau. After this time, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. The boys grew up, and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country, famished. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I am famished. This is why he was also called Edom. Jacob replied, first, sell me your birthright. I am about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to them, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. This has been the word of God for the people of God. And do we have next slide for children? Do we? Oh, yeah, that's great. Okay, it's children's time. So every kid, yes, come to the screens. Okay, today's story is about Jacob and Esau. I think you have heard so many times about Jacob. Okay, it's from 25, uh, Genesis chapter 25, 19 through 34. Isaac and Rebekah were getting older and they wanted to have a family. They prayed to God for a baby. Rebecca became pregnant with twin boys. Their names were Esau and Jacob. They were born on the same day, but they were very different. Esau was born first. He had red hair on his head and arms. Jacob was born second. He had he had dark hair. Jacob and Esau liked different things. Esau liked to be outdoors. He likes to hunt, fish, 
and watch the animals play. Esau enjoyed spending time with Isaac. Jacob liked being inside the tent where his family was. He likes to cook and made a delicious lentil stew. Jacob enjoyed spending time with Rebecca. One day, Esau returned home from hunting. Jacob was making lentil stew, and Esau was very hungry. Can I have some lentil stew and some bread, please, Jacob? Esau asked. Sure, if you trade me your birthright for some stew. Jacob said, Esau thought about this. His birthright made him the leader of their family when they became grown-ups. That was several years away, and he was hungry right now. Did he really need to be the leader and get all of the family's valuables? You have a trade, said Esau. One bowl of stew coming right up, said Jacob. Jacob was excited. He really wanted to be in charge of their family. Okay, so would you have made the choice, same choice as, as, as Esau? Sometimes we just think about right now. But think about in the future. God will bless you. So, from Esau and Isaac's story, okay, sometimes we just want what other people want. But God already has blessed you. So, so remember, okay? Okay, let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for everything you have given us and blessed us. Please, let us remember your grace and love always. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So see you next Sunday. Good. Okay, let's say together, each other. Okay, where am I? Okay, here. <laughs> you are God's children. You are God's children. Yes, look at each other, not look at me. So look at each other. You are God's children. You are God's children. For several Sundays, we have listened to some stories from the book of Genesis about Abraham's family stories. And last Sunday, we saw Abraham's chief servant found the wife of Isaac. Then Isaac and Rebecca met and they got married. That was the story in Genesis 24. And the narrative goes on. The first part of chapter 25 talks about the death of Abraham, verse 7, when he was 175 years. Then in verse 12 through 18, there are the descendants of Ishmael, Abraham's son from Hagar. Mentioned Ishmael's son's names, the place they settled in, and when Ishmael died. Today's story starts in verse 19 of the chapter 25. It says, these are the descendants of Isaac. Abraham's son, Abraham was the father of Isaac. Usually after these words, these are the descendants. The Bible mentions who is the father of whom and whose sons are whose fathers, who bore whom, like that. But today's narrative, after these words, these are the descendants, you see the account about Isaac and Rebekah's twin boys' story. The, bo the story starts, verse 20 through 21. And Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean of Padan Aram, sister of Laban, the Aramean, 
Isaac prayed to the Lord for his Man living in tent. So Asa, the first one, is born rough and ready. A hairy boy who grows, uh, grow, uh, grows up to be a rugged hunter who loves the open country. Jacob is a quiet and plain man staying among the tent. These verses are as normal as other kids and twins. Even identical twins have totally different characters. And Issa and Jacob are fraternal twins. Yeah, they're fraternal. Yeah, they're different. Yeah. I have three boys. People say they look alike. Just different ages. Do you think so? No? no? Okay, good. Even though they look similar, they are totally different. I believe that you know what I'm talking about if you have grand, your children and grandchildren. Paul, my first son, likes to try a new and unique food. Samuel, the middle one, eats 
what he had before. And Joseph does not care what he is eating. Something is there, he wants to try, he tries. Something is there, he wants to, no, yeah. And Paul wears what I tossed to him. Okay, today you wear this one. And he said, yes. But Samuel wears what he wanted to wear. And Joseph does not seem to have any favorite things to wear. Sometimes he likes this one, and sometimes he yeah, likes that one. And so I don't know what he wants. <laughs> Even though they are different, they are all unique, special, and precious to me. And Esau and Jacob, of course, distinctive, special. These differences are a, a normal and ordinary part in this family. However, next verse aggravates these differences. Verse 28, Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Can you see this, yeah, difficult? The parents play favorite. Isaac favoring Esau and Rebecca loving Jacob. The Bible clearly tells us the favoritism. I think this is the starting point of this family's tragedy. These parents love their own favorite things. Isaac liked eating of wild games, so he loved, loves Esau because he hunts and brings it to his father, Isaac. And Rebecca loves Jacob because he stayed at home. That means probably he has a conversation with her more than his brother. And he tried to praise her and understand her. One of my uh, friends shared one time about him and his mother. His father was not having conversation with her, so he, she felt lonely and alone. As he grew up, my friend has seen how their parents has, have been doing. So he has tried to talk to her and share his daily life often with her. He has an older brother, but he looks like his father and has not talked to his mother often. The second and the younger son, my friend, has tried to be close to his mother. He told me that his mother and him, he are so close friends. And sometimes my, my friend said, my mom said to me, yeah, you are, you are like my husband. <laughs> so probably Rebecca loves more than, uh, loves Jacob more than Esau. But we don't know Isaac and Rebecca's family situations in details. But as a parent, they show favoritism to their children. And that makes their children different and difficult. Jacob eventually cons his brother Esau out of the family birthright. Verse 31 through 33. Jacob said, first, sell me your birthright. Esau said, I am about to die, but what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. The birthright was his brother's as the first one, not Jacob's. But he wanted it. When he was born, he clung to his brother's heel. He clung to what he did not have. He saw 
what his brother had that was not his. He covet what others have. That is a way to be away from God. We know Esau despised his birthright, so sold it. He did not care that God had blessed him as the first one. And also we know from 20, verse 23, God says that the older will serve the younger. God promised, but Jacob did not trust that God had blessed him. So both these twins has problem. And that later in chapter 27, Rebecca deceived his, uh, her own husband so that she and Jacob could swindle the family blessing. What can the twins learn from their parents? Isaac loves Esau and Rebecca loves Jacob. And Jacob learns his lessons well. For a few chapters later, he too plays favorite, loving Rachel more than Leah, his wives. What happened? What happened in this family? Through today's story, not only this, but through all the stories in the Bible, what does God want us to learn and listen to? These people and their families in Genesis look, feel, sound, and act like us. There are no perfect human in the Bible and in this world, and only Jesus is the one. And we humans and all people in the Bible are imperfect. We deceive, we lie, we covet, we hate, we fall, we break, we hurt, and we kill, we betray, and we steal. Where can we seek for our hope in this world? The only answer is God. God works in our very lives, through our lives, and with us. It looked like the promise of Abraham and Sarah would be stopped because Sarah was barren and Rebecca was barren. But God multiplied birth in these families and pre uh, pres preserved God's promises until David to Jesus. God is telling us continually through the stories in the Bible that we need to turn around to God every time when we are away from God. And we need to return to God when we fall in sins. And we need to be renewed every day. And we need to trust and believe what God has blessed us. This week, I, will, I, I challenge you Ask yourself this question. It's gone? Okay, it's gone. <laughs> so I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna say, how has God worked in and through your own family's brokenness? How has God worked in and through your own family's brokenness? I believe that you have experienced so many blessings from God. The Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Esau's families, God has blessed, but they didn't believe and they didn't trust. However, God continually blessed them. And think about how has God in and through your own family's brokenness. 
May God's lead and work and presence be with you. And may you give thanks for what God has blessed you. Amen. And this time, yeah, we are going to invite Richard Meyer for the beautiful music. Wow, there's, uh, there's people here. This is amazing, it's good to see you all. And you know, when you watch the news these days, if you go to one channel, you get one account of what's going on in the world. And you go to another channel, you, you get a whole new spin on what's going on. So what is real? And so times haven't changed that much. When, back in, in, in uh, what, in Jacob's time and all, all the, the story we just heard, they, they, they got com a lot of conflict in the information they received. But the amazing thing is, even from that time to right now, we know that our God is real. Feel him in my heart. 
my God is real, real in my soul. My God is real, for oh, He has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. My God is real. For I can feel him in my soul. I cannot tell just how I fell when Jesus took my sins away but since that day praise God since that hour my God has been real for I can feel his holy power my God is real real in my soul my God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. My God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. And we are going to share our joys and concern. If you have joys and concern, please let church know. And we are going to pray uh, for you. And offering, place your offering in a plate in the back of the sanctuary. So at, before, you come in, before you come into the sanctuary or when you leave, there is a plate in the back. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we are here to worship you. And we are grateful for this time and this holy place. Because you are with us. For four months, we have been, you have been with us wherever we worship you and pray to you. Help us remember that in all these things you are with us. Hear our cries of frustration when the plans that we have so carefully crafted do not work out. Be with us in all of our journeys, guiding our lives and our steps, and again, lavishly pour, pour your love and mercy on us and prepare us to serve you in all that we do. As we receive, offer our morning offering. Please let us remember all the things that which you have entered our lives and be grateful. Hear our prayers and please receive our gift to you. And please hear this prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the, and the glory forever. Amen. And our closing hymn is the Old Rugged Cross, verse 1.
as at last I lay down, I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. May God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Feed us for every good works to the glory of your name. Amen. <laughs>